Welcome to the Valhalla Filmcast, a show where normal guys talk about the films that they love. And here are your hosts, Bryce Thompson, Brian Hammond, and Cody Ryrie. Now get ready, because the show starts in 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Valhalla Filmcast. I am Bryce Thompson, here with Cody Ryrie, Brian Hammond. We are going to talk about The Invitation. It is a movie on Netflix, currently screaming, stre- not screaming, <laughs> streaming <laughs> on Netflix. Uh, Cody, you are the one that brought this to the Valhalla Filmcast's yes. attention. So you go ahead and you tell the audience why they're listening to a podcast about The Invitation right now. A movie they've never heard of, probably. Yes. Um, well, that's the point, I think. Uh, one of the things... Critics oftentimes get a bad rap for being just a-holes and hating everything. But I think one, things that critics, one thing that critics can do that's worthwhile is bring attention to things that are good or interesting or worthwhile, um, but they don't get as much attention. And I felt like... Uh, we'll get to our verdict on this film in a minute, but I felt like it was definitely worth attention, at least. And worth discussion. And I'd never heard of it. I'd never seen a trailer for it. Uh, nothing. I saw it on like one or two guys' lists for their best movies of the year. And I thought, well, that's on Netflix. I have Netflix, so at least I can watch that one. And uh, that's how it came to our attention. For a brief synopsis. Now, the synopsis will only synopse. Is that a word? Can I use it as a verb? It will sure. synopsize <laughs> the, uh, only the very first part of the movie. Because a lot of the... The movie relies on unveiling and mystery, and we don't want to ruin that. And how this podcast is going to go is we'll have a discussion at the beginning that's spoiler-free, and then we'll give you large and neon-lit warnings when we go into a spoiler discussion. Because we have to have a spoiler discussion. After I saw this movie, my number one thing was I have to talk to this talk about this movie to somebody, but no one had heard of it or watched it except for me. So that's what we're here for, and hopefully you mm-hmm. can give us your opinion too. Now, a synopsis, there's a couple that is driving to a a dinner party that is being held by the ex-wife of the man in the couple. And they have suffered a tragedy in their past, and since that tragedy they broke up as a marriage. It's been several years, um, and now they're going back to meet with all their old friends that used to be this friend group at the house where the tragedy happened, where this couple used to be married. And so now the wife of the couple has a new husband, and this guy who used to be the husband has a new girlfriend, and everybody's moved on with their lives, and they've come back to catch up years after some of these tragic events. And that's kind of all I think I can say without getting into spoiler territory. It is kind of a mystery, suspense, slash horror movie. I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of genre-bending. It's kind of but, a, just like a mystery thriller drama. Yeah, yeah. And it's made for next to no money. Um, not even made by an independent studio. It's made by a group of people who threw the money together and filmed it at one of the houses in the Hollywood Hills. And they shopped it out and got Netflix interested. Um, the only actor I recognized was John Carroll Lynch, who played yeah. the Zodiac Killer, or maybe the Zodiac Killer in Zodiac, um, as well as some other stuff. He's a great little character actor, but the rest of the people um, were new to me. So it's a lot of small-name people. Um, What was everybody's non-spoiler thoughts on the film? (laughs) (laughs) Brian, Uh, why don't you go first? Brian, go first. Uh, Bryce is gathering himself, so... Yes. And long hair. He looks just like Tom Hardy. Did you get that, Cody? Nope. Apparently not. Um. <laughs> anyways, I think it was really um, suspenseful. Um, I think that uh, the the beginning part, you know, without giving any spoilers, it kind of was a little bit confusing. Um, but in a good way. Like, it didn't put it all on the plate out there. It lets you little pieces and pieces and digest it and uh, 
build upon your knowledge and um, turned into a great suspense. Um, so I really liked it. Uh, um, Bryce, what did you think? I thought it was an interesting movie. Uh, I'm still digesting it. Like, I watched it, like, literally 30 minutes ago. And so it's still kind of sinking in. I don't know if I hate it, but I don't know if I like it. Um, I can tell you what my wife thinks of it. She thought it was really boring, kind of pointless (laughs) and stupid. Um, Yay! (laughs) I, I have a perfect record of recommending stuff that Bryce's wife hates. Like, it is flawless. You know, it's not even like she felt like middle of the road about some of them. No, 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 no. It's like total and complete she, hatred for Bryce, everything. Bryce, does she know beforehand that Cody likes it? See, it was kind of funny. Like, halfway through the movie, she's like, is this a movie that Cody recommended? And I was like, <laughs> it was. It, it was. <laughs> And um, I believe she said along the lines of, this is the last movie, uh, Cody recommended movie that I watch. So I guess that that can kind of tell you, lead you one way. Um, my, I guess first off, it starts out slow. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really get anywhere until you're like done with the movie. So, and I mean, I try to like give people perspective. Like, I think it's really like for someone that just like gathered up some money and filmed a movie. That's pretty cool. Like, it looks really well. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it looks really good. Like the some of the camera shots as I was watching the movie, I was like, wow, that's really cool. Like, that's really neat how they can do that. Like one scene, um, when they're coming out of. They're coming back out of a uh this isn't a spoiler they come out of the a bedroom or something like that to come and uh talk to some people and the camera shot as they're as it's following them it's in front of them it's following them out of the out of the bedroom it's really neat looking i think it's really cool kind of you don't really because during that part of the movie you don't really know what's going on you're kind of like okay this is really weird and the camera shot really kind of brings that home. And I thought it was really neat and interesting. Well, so. and it was made for, I think, well under a million dollars. It wasn't even yeah, that's you cool. know, close to a million dollars. So I, I, I think I always have a little bit more um, love and appreciation for, like you said, people who, who love to tell stories and make movies so much that they just do it. And I think that we owe them, you know, our attention as an audience and to give them the benefit of the doubt versus, you know, the $250 million movies that get made that everybody gets to go see. And there's 50 trailers for the thing I loved about this is I had not seen anything on it. A trailer for this movie would most likely ruin it. I was trying to think about like they would spoil so many of the surprises and the things that go into it. I don't know. I thought of one thing that you could do. You could like, it would just be like a short, real short trailer but it could be like the the beginning of the movie, like the very first scene you see him driving in the car, and they could like show both of them in the car, and then it could like, ooh, that might ru- that, that would ruin it. No, but you could just do like a <laughs> close up of, I'm gonna say the light, the uh-huh. close up of the light. You know what I'm talking about? You just do yeah. a close up on that, and then cut away. I mean, that would be pretty suspenseful. You wouldn't really know what's going on. Because you obviously know that that is important, and we're getting real close to spoiler territory. And we're not doing that, but um, I mean, I think that'd be interesting. But I agree with you again that well, you can't and really do one. I'm gonna agree with you on one thing that it starts slow because I started it on Netflix. I was doing some other stuff. I wasn't really giving it all my attention, yeah. and so and about ten or fifteen minutes go by, and then it's really in twenty minutes. And then some things happened, which we'll get to in the spoiler interview, and I was like, okay, putting aside the things I'm working on to finish watching this movie. So it kind of lulled me into its huh. 
its unease and its suspense. There is something at the very beginning of the film that I think is supposed to give you a hint of unease. But uh, as soon as that was over and they're like at the dinner party, I was like, okay, whatever. And I was just, you know, exactly. It, it had to yeah, get yeah, me, yeah, yeah. it had to get me back at mm-hmm. a certain point. But I think that's part of how the movie is designed as well. Because there is this idea that are you watching one thing or are you watching another thing? And for it to be very mundane sells the the questions you have in your mind. So I'm not criticizing the movie for that, but I am saying that's the response I had to it. Were I to watch it again, which I want to, I would be looking at the beginning of the film in a very different way there, than I did the first time. Yes, yes. There are, I, I don't know how engaged you were with it. You said you're doing some things, but there are very, you know, very... I, I don't know what you'd call it, like um, hints of what's that something's not right very mm-hmm. early on. You know, from almost the first meeting, um, you know, meeting the, the married couple. And so, um, and I don't know if you missed a lot of those, but it, it it is slow. I thought it was paced perfectly for that type of film. I could understand how mm. some people, it wouldn't be their cup of tea, but I thought that it was there was enough, um, you know, kind of subtle clues and hints that uh kept me going and um you know kind of excited for and anticipation you know what was to come so well and i i guess the one of the last spoiler free things i want to say is um i like that the movie's about something i like that there seemed to be saying things about grief and, you know, I mean, I love just a pure genre exercise as much as the next guy. And this has some really great genre moments. But I, I love that it was trying to say something about, you know, the human experience and the human condition and using kind of the thriller elements to do that. I always feel like a movie has a little more meat on its bones when it actually has a point. And I really felt like this one had a point from beginning to end and it never really lost sight of what it was about and I love that about the movie we ready yeah, to rate it I would say mm-hmm. oh go ahead sorry Bryce uh, one thing that I would say about you know the, the subtle hints that it gives off is I mean from the very beginning you kind of know that something has to happen you know mm-hmm. I mean who I, I my wife was joking that like the movie ends and everyone just like goes home. There is that like, possible like the way, that like, that's that the way movie that could exist. I think <laughs> I think that movie it could totally exist. Could. But it we're totally getting close could. to spoilers here. We are. So yeah, we are. Let's so like let's I said let's sp- let's rate let's it spoilers, and then let's go to spoilers. How about that? Okay, sounds good. Okay, Brian. Um, I I loved it. I would say that uh, for this type of film, um, and it, you know, and it it plays all in one location, and for that type of film to keep you engaged, you know, through the whole thing, um, I think I think it did its job perfectly. I'm gonna say like an eight to nine somewhere in there. I I okay. really liked it. Okay, Bryce. Uh. I don't know. I don't know if I can give it a star review. <laughs> I think that it's too too diverse. I think my rating has to be if you're in to a movie if you want to watch something different, something new watch it. If you're not really into something like that then don't watch it. You'll be disappointed. Well, and I looked on so. a lot of the people's reviews online and this movie has definitely split people. This is yeah. one that people were either like, oh, it's so interesting and amazing, whatever else, and it was dumbest thing I've ever watched in my life. Yeah. I want them to burn, you know? Like, it was just I totally one get or the other. Them. Yeah, I, I can see that. I get it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I don't think I'm going to recommend it to anyone just because if they hate it, I don't want that to be on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if I meet, talk to someone... And they seem like, hey, they might be into a movie like that. I would, I'd let them know about it. But I don't think I would recommend it, like to everyone that I ever meet. So yeah, no, I would, I would definitely have to consider my audience before I recommended yes. it to someone. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, that being said, for me, just for my own, my tastes and what I like, I'm right there with Brian. I think it's a 9 out of 10. I I put it right up there with Hacksaw Ridge and Kubo and the Two Strings, one of my favorite movies that I saw this year, just because it's wow. my kind of thing. It's right up my alley. So like I said, not yeah. up everybody's alley, but it was it was definitely up my alley. And the more it's up my alley, the more it's not up Bryce's wife's alley. So I think we're seeing... <laughs> <laughs> the two, the two then if we got married, issue. we could not get along. There is a correlation <laughs> there. <laughs> um, so I guess if we're gonna go all, are we doing spoilers right, now? Right. Let's let's say what it's rated. Um, because it, where oh, yes. it's made yes. for Netflix, oh, there's no yeah. like rating. It, this is a rated R. In case rated. you're wondering, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not rated. It's so it's equivalent of R, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I'd give it an R rating. There's bad words and <laughs> slight nudity uh silhouette yes. yeah silhouette silhouette nudity, nudity. Right? yes yeah yeah there is <laughs> to go into more would be scene. spoilers but <laughs> there, is a bad scene. there is a bad scene all right but... so we're doing spoilers i want to scare everybody away now if you haven't seen the movie uh and you really like kind of thrillers and mysteries go watch it yeah and then come back and listen to the rest of this if you're not interested then keep listening and Maybe you'll be like, crap, I should have watched that. Or you've been like, oh, I was so right. So How about you just go watch it and just tell us what you thought of it? It's only like an yeah. hour and a half. It's not like it's a long movie. Mm-hmm. It's not Lawrence of Arabia. You're not going to be spending lots of time on it. So, Unless okay, you're spoilers. Bryce and his wife. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it seems like forever, right? <laughs> All right, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Now you've been warned. Okay, let's get into it. So <laughs> here's the thing. At one point in the movie, and this is, maybe I'm naive, and maybe that's why it worked for me, I honestly thought that maybe they were going to go the route that he was just unhinged because he was so upset by the death of his child. I thought that, and I have to say I was disappointed. That they like, didn't do the that. First, the No, no, no. The first explosion, mm-hmm. I was like... And then the dude walks in. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> I was like, really? They're just going to make him insane? And then I was like, how is the rest of this movie going to go? That would have been horrible. I mean, I could see it doing that, but that would have been a crappy movie. Seriously. And then I would have wanted I, my I really seven ninety nine back. Yeah, I really liked that uh, they... How, the, how, how it kind of ended in a way. How... They pour it all out, and you're like, okay, it's going to be totally one of those cult things where they all die, like, drinking the punch. And he like, freaks out, and he totally does what the, the big the big bald dude uh, guy, he does that to the other girl. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, my gosh, they totally are just going to make him insane <laughs> by kidding me. And then, oh, uh, they actually did do it the way yeah. they were supposed to do it. Yeah, but I, I give it high marks. For, for tricking me. Because, yes. you know, all three yeah. of us are very savvy film goers. We've seen a lot of movies. And I don't know about you all, like I said, or Brian, but I was I was really on the fence about it. I was like, gosh, I don't know. Uh-huh. You know, I don't know. And, like, I, I was thinking it would be kind of, I don't know how they're going to end it if he is crazy. And I kept totally being on his side, like, yeah, something's going on. Something's going oh, on. Oh, yeah. And then when totally it, on his side. when the guy walked in, when the Asian guy walked in, I was like, oh, I'm crazy too. Like, you know, it was like this real, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm in his shoes. And then when they're all about to drink the stuff, I was really torn because I was like, okay, yeah, they're probably crazy. But you know what happened with the, with the Asian guy? Like, this could <laughs> yeah, be no. all over again. And it's that whole thing that David Fincher, uh, not David Fincher, but it's the, the, the girl with the dragon tattoo thing that the serial killer he says the fear of offending is often greater than the fear of danger, <laughs> and I was like, "This that's what this movie's about." Like, it's like, are you willing to make make a fool of yourself and have an outburst if you're really worried something's going to go down? And yeah, that's like that's true. a huge fear of mine is like social tension. I like super pick up on it, and so like I said, the he hits the coyote or whatever it was. Was it coyote at the beginning? He hits yeah, in the car. Yeah, <laughs> and. 
I'm like, huh, oh, obviously there's some foreshadowing or some, you know, whatever going on here. And that's when I was interested. Then when they got to the party, I think the reason I was kind of disinterested from it, maybe not because it was slow, but because I have a really hard time with awkward social situations. <laughs> oh, so, man, like, so, you know, I'm yeah. watching it and I'm like, ugh. Like, it's driving me nuts because I can't stand yeah. it. Like, that's the reason I can't watch half of the Office episodes because <laughs> oh, they just man. do awkward stuff and it makes my uh. skin crawl. You know, and that's how it was at the beginning. But then I got really interested when legitimately weird stuff started happening. Then I started to be able to kind of put some of that aside. But I was very uncomfortable with. Oh man, Can, the yeah, stuff. the main character he makes it so awkward at times. You're like, okay, dude, just let it go. <laughs> just let him leave the key in the door. Whatever. Can just I stop. tell you about my roller coaster of emotions? You guys both talked about when you know what you were thinking during the yeah. the dinner scene you know so the whole mm-hmm. movie i thought that uh logan's character was legitimately sane right because mm-hmm. just the way the the um his ex i hated her you know but she <laughs> yeah. played it so perfect me you know in fact i looked up her picture to see if she really looked that fake and they did makeup on her to make her look that way, and I think that's that's incredible. But anyways, I, I digress. So at the dinner scene, I, the whole movie, I think that he's saying that, uh, yeah, something is awry here. And then when the, the Asian comes in, and I feel weird calling him the Asian. I wish we knew his name. <laughs> Just going to throw that They call out him that, though. They call him, like, the late Korean and all kinds of stuff in the movie okay, or that's, whatever. That's so, true. Yeah. So anyways, when he walks in, I'm like... Oh, crap. But then when I saw the, the glass of wine that they were pouring in, it was not a bottle. It was a pitcher of uh-huh. wine. I was like, wait, something is off. And so that's the moment I knew. But then I started double-guessing myself again. And so it really does lead you down that path of, am I crazy too? Like, Because yeah. that whole social awkwardness plays such a big part in your emotions as well. Because I think we're all... I think as humans, most of us are that way. There's a few that, you know, shop at Walmart that don't really care about <laughs> social true. awkwardness. But, <laughs> but, uh, anyways, yeah, I think it was, uh, I think it was very, very subtle. Um, the things that led up to that, the climax of it. And gosh, I, I really loved it. Here's another question Sorry, I have Bryce. for you. Do you remember when the one lady leaves the party? Yeah. And uh, the John yes. Carroll Lynch guy goes after her. So is she dead in a ditch somewhere, or did she get oh, home? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. She's, she's, she's dead. dead. <laughs> she's got to be, right? <laughs> but this oh, yeah, is... Yeah, I mean... It's a witness. I knew that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I guess dead bodies are witnesses everywhere, you know. But Well, and I thought that was the final master stroke, right? You go through the whole thing. You don't know what's going on. They introduce it with that video... That, uh, you know, the person dying. And the videos kind of played it. They were very, it was sinister at the same time. I was like, well, I can get, I guess I can kind of see how it's not too sinister. It's just a person dying. They didn't kill that person. You know, like, it it was very culty. And at the same time, I was like, well, you know, I, I've seen church videos before that were moderately creepy. But, the, you know, like, it just, it was this constant, like, back and forth and, uh, but but the, the master stroke, I think, is having all that happened at the dinner party. And then they've set up very carefully the idea that this group is big. And that there's, you know, thousands of people in this group. And the thing with the Red Lantern, I thought, was the master stroke of the movie. Oh, yeah. I thought that was way cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it elevates it from one crazy group to this almost, like, apocalyptic, you know. It made me almost, like, end. kind of, like, like... Okay, I'm not going to any dinner parties. And if I see a red lantern, uh, running. Yeah. Well, it takes, you know, because the movie's small. The movie takes place in all in one location, and it, yeah. you know, kind of feels small. And then that's the master stroke. At the end, you see that hillside with all the other red lanterns, and you hear the sirens going and stuff. And it made the movie Ugh. feel big. It made it, it feel, you know, like, and it was really uh-huh. this really creepy, dread inducing finale which I thought was just brilliant. Like, I already loved the movie at that point. I was like, yeah, I'm really with this. And then that, and I'd forgotten about the lantern lantern lighting scene. It happened. It's one of those things that's happening and you're like, huh, oh, that's weird. But they're doing all kinds of weird crap, you know? So it just kind of 
goes over yeah. and you're and then when it came back I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was a brilliant way to end the movie. Another thing I just thought of this that I that I'm liking about the movie was it's not like they are like they do this all the time. You know, it's yeah. not like they have people over and kill them. It's because they're sloppy, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not like really great at what they're doing you know they play that i want to game or whatever and it gets really awkward and they don't really know (laughs) what they're doing and it's just you can tell that they're like trying to accomplish a goal and they don't really know how to go about doing it but Mm -hmm. they kind of do because this dude's told them i thought that's kind of interesting how they made that there work. were there were so many little i'm talking about the small details a lot but you mentioned the girl that left the party that was Mm -hmm. incredible because it's realistic that someone would be offended by what was taking place that Mm -hmm. it it made it believable that wait a second you know we are in a real you know situation here where you know there's normal people that are feeling uncomfortable and 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 she left and i i thought that that was um was great that that happened plus then they you know um made it very suspenseful with uh, his character following her out and <laughs> very creepy oh, yeah. but yeah Ugh. well yeah, and, like, and you know you go know ahead, too because when she when she pulls out and you're like okay nothing's gonna happen because he starts walking back yeah. up, you know and then she pulls behind a little ways and she's like he's like oh wait no <laughs> i need to talk to you and then she pulls behind it and you're like oh man she's dead and logan <laughs> yeah. leaves the window and uh, yeah, your light leaves no. the window too. <laughs> what are you doing? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think a few other things that stood out to me. Um, I liked. Uh, I don't know the actor's name. The guy who played Logan. Um, uh, Lo- no, his name's Logan. Uh, uh, oh, the yeah, actor's name is Logan. Logan. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Logan Marshall Green is his. I know name. he was. On, the only thing I saw him on before this was Prometheus. He was on Prometheus. Yes, he was in yep. Devil, was. which I really liked too. The Elevator. Okay, uh, but he looks a lot like Tom Hardy. Sometimes unnervingly like, like Tom Hardy. I was like, ah, ridiculous. Is it Tom Harder? Uh-huh. <laughs> Tom Hardy? Yes, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, he. Um, I thought he gave a great performance. Kind of, it's a tricky spot to be in, because um, he has to kind of play both. I could be crazy. Or I could be totally sane, you know, and I thought he did a pretty good job of walking the line. Again, though, I think my standout performance is uh, John Carroll Lynch when he gives that monologue about his wife. Oh, and yeah. she was just this brightness and she was wonderful. And then I beat her brains in and killed her. I'm like, what? what? It, was like, <laughs> yeah. it was very shiny-esque, uh, you know, uh, the shiny mask or whatever. When he's walking yeah. up the stairs, you know, just very. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Those should not be juxtaposed together. Those, those emotions, and it's very yeah. That, that he's he loves his wife so much, and she's so amazing, and uh, you know, and but there wasn't remorse for killing her because part of the religion is you let all that go. Yeah, yeah. and so and then at the end they're like, well, can a person change? And I'm like, well, suck. I, I guess <laughs> it's <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's I think it's really it's really eye opening because. I guess, in a way, in my mind anyways, I would think that, like, if if you kill someone, like, you don't just get rid of, like, the sadness or anything. Like, I think that would still kind of be there in a way. Like, you want to get over and, like, like heal in a way, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, you killed someone, so I imagine that's pretty hard. But he, he says that, like, he's, it's not there. You know, because yes. we're, we're not yes. supposed to do that. You know, it's it's not part of it, and so I, that's kind of revealing to me too. That okay, this is not what you think it is, and it's not just this great, great, wonderful thing. Well, and I, I loved again getting back to what the movie's really about. And I said I think it's really mm-hmm. about grief and the way people handle grief. Mm-hmm. And there's this idea, and I think the two big contrasting. Everybody in the film has grief that they're dealing with. Almost everybody. But I really think the big two contrasting characters are, I don't know the character's name, but the guy Logan who plays the main character and his ex-wife. Will, Will and his ex-wife. Yeah. Those are the two, and they show two ways of dealing with grief. And I really like that when he freaks out the first time, Will, before the Korean guy walks in and he says, you know, our son died. That's real. That really happened. And he feels like her trying to let go of all that is 
uh, a betrayal of that experience in a way that she's not dealing with it anymore. And mm-hmm. she, you know, you feel like, oh, she's found peace and happiness and been able to move on. But that's obviously, from the very beginning, a very cracking facade that there's, right. you know, real grief coming up from that because she snaps at people. Yeah. And then, you know, especially at the end, I actually found it kind of touching when she's she shoots herself, you know. And then they carry yeah. her. She, that's what was crazy. We'll get back to that. But when and they carry her outside and she talks about how much she misses their son and she finally acknowledges it. And mm. that was touching for me. That was moving, which I didn't expect to be moved by this movie at that point in it, you know, when it had been through so much. So I, I loved that the movie was about, like I said, it was about grief and it was about how we deal with grief and what's healthy and what's not healthy. And even healthy reasons or ways to deal with it are hard. And I kind of felt like, and maybe I'm wrong, one of the, towards the very end of the film, when uh, Logan goes and watches the video of the cult leader on the computer, that there was half an inkling of, gosh, you know, that is some way to maybe deal with this. Like, he almost looked like he was tearing up a tiny bit. Like, there's, that, you know, he didn't give in to it, but you can see how someone who was so hurting, was hurt so bad, could give in to something like that. And yet at the same time, the script operates on multiple levels because that's the key thing you watch where you go, oh, yeah, he's telling them all it's time to kill all your friends and yourselves in that video. But it sounds at the same time so comforting to somebody who's had those experiences. I I love the fact that it dealt with that on a number of levels. It compared, it contrasted, and it stayed throughout the whole movie. It was a theme throughout the whole thing. So is this... uh... Uh, the elephant in the room is this like an indictment uh w- were there implications or inferences that this is like you know scientology or mm. the secret or things like that do you think that there was a statement being made about that well the poison wine is very jim mm-hmm. jones mm-hmm. you know uh but the whole grief in all that is is very scientology isn't it yeah, I think I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert. The only thing I know about Scientology is it made Tom Cruise jump on a couch in <laughs> yeah. Oprah. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I'm not the expert. But yeah, I mean, it'd it just really be interesting that to way. see if uh, Kusama Karen Kusama has like any ties to friends or anything that because it is such a, a prominent part of Hollywood. You know, you have that's this what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, you have this very um, you know fake lifestyle, which I think she. Pro- portrayed very well and then you have this kind of um this hollowness this emptiness this void that these hollywood actors fill and they, and they seek for something they seek for you know um those that type of uh, feeling in those groups and i think that's why you know um i don't know it was just something that i thought of as i was watching it well on the hollywood uh, setting and the actors and that that really seemed to hint towards scientology Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, I also like the fact that it looked like places we drove by when we were in Los yeah, Angeles. Absolutely. I was like, "Hey, we like probably drove up that street." I mean, probably not, <laughs> but it looked like it, you know. Yeah. So it was it was very interesting along those lines. What so. do you think? So the random girl that's there, what do you? Th- why was she there? Um, so do you think that that was, is Perry his name? Is that, um, John's um, 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 character's name? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, is that, are, were they love interests or? No. I she don't know. Like she, it didn't really. It, she seemed like she was all about just free love. So. That's true. Which is a very, it's a very cult yes. thing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's, you get the, a lot of that in, you know, that was the Marilyn Manson group was all into free love and things like that. So it's, it's like Charles it's heavily Manson. borrowing from, you know, those, not Marilyn Manson. <laughs> that's you, right? I felt um, obligated to correct you. I'm sorry. I went, Wait, that's a pretty big piece of uh, history there. Hey, he picked the name for that reason, so <laughs> yeah, he's got to expect that anyway. But yeah, and I think that the the was it yes, Pruitt yes. was the name of John Carroll Lynch's mm-hmm. character. Yeah. Pruitt and her, you know, they're reinforcements. They're there to, and I don't mean just physically reinforcements. I mean like they're moral, spiritual reinforcements. They're true believers that are there to help with the last stage of the journey. If there's any doubts, because I think they're worried about the ex-wife 
girl. You know, mm. there's she's not the she's not the true, true, true mm-hmm. believer that uh, Pruitt is or that the girl mm-hmm. is. And you see, I think also they're helpful because Pruitt, you can tell, joined the group because he needed to get mm-hmm. rid of guilt, you know, from that action of his wife. And the girl maybe joined the group because she felt restrained and needed like that feeling of freedom that came from it. It's just interesting to see how it affected different yeah. people. And I, I said, I think they're there for, and also it, cre- it it's uneasy. It, it, it makes you feel at ill at ease um, when you're as Logan as that character. That there's people that they, you don't know these people, and why are they even here? I think he even says that at a certain point, you know. And we find out later on why they're there. But what did you all think? I wanted to know what you all thought of the reveal, the final reveal that they were part of a crazy cult, and this was what you thought it was. How did you think that was handled in the movie? I liked how it just kind of so like I guess just gonna spoil it all right now so like I kind of already did but when he shoots the guy giving her her, uh, uh, CPR or whatever and you can tell that it's just it's it's unraveled you know like this is not the Mm -hmm. way it's supposed to go and um, Eden his ex-wife is like whoa man like whoa like what is going on this is not the plan this is not how it's supposed to happen i like that because Mm -hmm. like the only time that you uh the only time that you would um actually have something go like that well would be like if if you're all on board you know and so right if it just like goes out and you know it doesn't work the way you think it's gonna work i like that but i do have one thing one question why are they killing everyone like what's the purpose so they can all be together in this paradise oh, afterlife okay that makes so much sense it's not heaven unless you're with all the people and that's that you why love. she and that's why so. they invited them to this place so they could kill them and they would all be well right? Or no? Okay, I'm an idiot. I'm a total idiot. I hate when obvious things hit me in the face, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, my gosh, uh-huh. I'm such an idiot." It's so obvious. That's what the whole thing at the, with the coyote at the beginning is: is the coyote is in terrible pain and has to be put out of its misery. It's a mercy killing, uh-huh. and all these people are, you know, especially the I don't know if all of them, but the main guy, he's in terrible pain, and they know he's in terrible pain. And what's the merciful thing to do? is to to end the pain. So they even talk about, oh, yeah, we had to kill a coyote on the way over. Yeah. And the one crazy new husband is like, well, that's the merciful well, that was, thing. That was a very merciful, you know? that was a merciful kill. Yeah. He says, like, we'll talk about that. Yeah, exactly. We'll talk about that or more or something like that, doesn't he? Something like that. And yeah, like, yeah, okay, something whatever. like that. I'm an idiot. Yeah, okay, sense. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm with you, Cody, because I, I seriously <laughs> – thought that okay well he's putting out of its misery i got that part but the whole correlation kind of went over my head (laughs) i was kind of thinking well is it showing him what he can do you know that he does that he has the power to to fight back and kill you know what i mean but Mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense and i feel stupid too so (laughs) you're not alone cody but uh yeah uh, but but i do think that um it's a very interesting interesting movie and it's still digesting in my brain though well can I say this I feel like I'm kind of a bad person because as soon I remember the shot the shot when he he freaks out knocks all the glasses out and the girl attacks him and he throws her and hits her head and you think oh my gosh he's killed her because he's crazy from his son dying and then you see the shot. She starts to wake up, and you cut to the other lady, and mm-hmm. she's foaming at the mouth, and she's starting to get mm-hmm. sick. I felt so relieved at that moment. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> finally. Like, I know. And it's maybe not the best reaction to have to someone dying on screen, but I was like, at least we're yeah. not crazy. And it wasn't just him anymore. It was that's us. That's right. You know? I forgot about Sadie that got her head because you're right. That's at, that's at the point that I was like, oh, wait, maybe he is crazy. And, and this is how it's going to end. Yeah. He's a bad dude. Yeah. I... Just killed someone accidentally. And But then, yeah. Okay. 
Such a relief. Yeah. Yeah, that was... It's like, oh, I've never been good. so relieved to know that half the characters in a movie were all crazy cultists. As, Woo! That's, you know, I like... Think, cause, and that's another part, that, that <laughs> whole wine-drinking part, that's another good camera shot because, you know, they do the toast and then they zoom in on that girl for like a quick second and then he explodes. And you're like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Okay, you crazy. Like... Calm down, dude. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> and then he bashes her. And it goes so fast, too, which is really good, too, because you have totally forgot about that very important shot. And Yes, that's true. And, yep. then, and then when you see her foaming and dying, you're like, oh, hey, yeah, I remember. She drank. <laughs> She's the yeah. only one that drank yeah. it. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah I, it. It's a very well shot movie. See, it's come a very on, well shot movie. Let's say there's a lot to admire. No, definitely. I, just, I, I definitely I, think so. I want to give a shout out to every single actor that was in that because I think it was perfectly cast, uh-huh. uh, especially with, you know, the the, I guess B list actors. A lot of them. And no offense if you're listening. And yeah, I'm building ourselves <laughs> up because. <laughs> they're, anyways, they're not but yeah, yeah they're not listening. <laughs> but anyways, every single character, even even uh, um, Logan Marshall Green's um, girlfriend, every single person played their part perfectly. Even mm-hmm. even Sadie, the the psycho cultist, yeah. you know, she played that that role perfect. And I think even the characters that I didn't like, I didn't like the fakeness of. Um, of the ex-wife but she played it perfectly you know um and every single i think you know it was a perfect puzzle with with pieces of uh, perfect actors and i i have to give it props it was an excellent film and i don't know i'm i, I need to revisit it again in a month or so but uh yeah i loved it his I'm brian you, did Cody. your uh did your wife watch it with you, or did you watch? No, it by I watched. I watched by myself this time. Uh, okay. so. I'd be curious to hear what. I just want to hear as many opinions of this as sure, like <laughs> I can, because I'm just so curious. It's, it's kind of a litmus test for the person watching it, you know, because mm-hmm. people. I love movies that inspire a reaction, and this one definitely does one way or the other. And it's just curious. I'm not mad that people don't like it. I mean, I can oh, totally yeah. understand where they're coming from, but it's just interesting to me to see why people like it, why they don't like it. And I love that it's not just uh, it's not it's not a McDonald's hamburger movie. It's not something you watch and forget in two seconds. It really it it makes you respond to it one way or the other. And I really admire it for that. So before we said we were going to come back to this, but the gut shot. Why? Yes. <laughs> like really? Why? <laughs> you you're gonna live for like a long time. That's a. She she died lots quicker than she probably should have. The the but when she did it and she's like laying there all bleeding out and she's like come save me. I was thinking of uh, Reservoir Dogs when he the the dude gets uh-huh. shot in the gut like traumatic like scars my brain and lives the oh, entire yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. but like I remember I was like why did you shoot yourself in the gut? Like really? That was dumb. That was dumb. But I just thought yeah. of this maybe. It's grief, you know. Maybe she knows, like, this is a way to take my pain or something like that. Like, I'll feel or something. Well, and know. it's even – she's even – she's shooting herself in the womb even, mm. in the place that caused her all yeah. that pain That's in a way. Which is an interesting and thing I've, to do. I've, yeah. I liked what you said, Cody, as far as uh, the the ending with the, with the girl um, – I think that oh Bryce, go ahead. I lost my train of thought. I think I know what you're. <laughs> I, I think cut I know you what off. You're I saying though, because I agree with you, um, both of you. I like how the movie ended with her kind of like saying like, "Look, I was lost." Like she's pretty much said like, "I miss the kid mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like trying to get rid of this pain that I have," and. I liked the way that they kind of ended it with her kind of kind of coming to terms with it in a way um, and being able to have that closure yeah. in a way. And it kind of gives – it seems like it gives uh, Will closure too um, in a way. Mm-hmm. 
And I also one one other thing about the ending. I liked how they had three people live. Um, how the the other yeah I yeah liked me that. too. That's really interesting because mm-hmm. normally you know maybe there'd only be one or max two the final girl. Yeah, <laughs> but I liked how they had three of them. That was really that was really cool. It felt more yeah. real in a way, like that. If this really went down, then it wouldn't just be the main characters, Living. you know, yeah. that lived. It's yeah, I I liked also that it seemed to be you know going on this theme of grief. You know, if you try and swallow it, or if you try and you know, in some ways, I don't know, fairy tale it away. What happens? You end up hurting other yeah. people. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's what happens. Is the pain has to go somewhere. You can't just ignore it and act like it's not there. And so, if you don't do something with it, then you'll do it to other people. And I think that's what you see on a obviously a very exaggerated scale, but that's a real thing. And I again, I find that interesting that we're talking about something real, and we're doing it in a way that's entertaining and thought provoking. Yeah, mm-hmm. I totally agree with that. I mean, how many t- people? How many times? I mean, especially in this country, you know, people lashing out, doing horrible things because of something that has gone wrong in their lives that has caused them grief. Yeah. You see them lashing out because, you know, that's what happens. You know, like a small example is like you don't like someone. You can't, and but you're around them all the time. You're not just going to be able to just bottle it in forever eventually something's yeah. gonna slip mm-hmm. and it's just gonna be bad because you bottled it in for so long so i think that it kind of letting that out really and especially i feel like it it especially for like men it in general have always been kind of t- have been raised you know you know just man up you know just do it just deal with yeah, it you know exactly uh-huh. you know we don't mess around you know don't be crying or being a little baby you know don't be a girl you know that's that's like something that you're told you know just get out there and do what you need to do we don't have time to sit in our rooms and boo-hoo and i don't think that that's (laughs) that's correct i mean especially as not healthy i mean Mm -hmm. yeah we're we're like a civilized world in a way so i mean we can accept these these science fact these facts that that there are and i I don't think that's bad at all i mean to you know come to terms with things that the way they are i mean that's the way the brain works and that's something we need to accept but yeah i find it an interesting movie definitely well said well said can i throw out one thought and i don't think there was any like kind of easter eggs that kind of led up to this but as we were talking it kind of popped in my mind this could have been a completely different movie and not just that uh you know he's crazy and everyone else is sane but the uh the ex is rich right yes 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 um Uh you have sadie and pruitt and the other guy the husband they could have plotted this which obviously it wasn't because the ending but i was just wondering are there any you know glimpses of that of that they're trying to take this uh naive innocent uh grief-stricken girl and manipulate her mm. for her fortune is there any of that maybe from Pruitt or or anything I just don't know. a thought you could maybe I mean, on repeat viewings maybe. yeah something to look yeah, for yeah definitely i mean i could mm. see that how because they just kind of like show up randomly you know mhm and yeah. Well, and they seem very connected to the new husband more than the wife. Yeah, definitely. Yes. I mean, that's what suggested mm-hmm. that. And they build up that it's all her money, you know, it's it's not yeah. uh you know, Logan uh Logan's money, so they do make a a point of saying mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But anyways. So, w- on one more thing that just popped in my brain. When so after Pruitt arrives, there's another knock at the door, and he when he comes back in, he says it's some uh, people looking for a party. Oh what yeah, what do you think that's all about? Do you think it's actually people looking for a party, or do you think it's like someone being like, "Hey, what was that they, about?" They don't really ever I don't say. Know. 
yeah. kind of just leave it. And maybe maybe it's the the head guy. Maybe he's orchestrating all of these deaths, and maybe he's just checking up on the individual parties. I I don't know. Maybe it's that was never no, answered. Not really. That was it, just it wasn't. Kind of a, which is, an open which is question. interesting because another thing that it could just be people uh, looking for a party, and who knows? He could have sent them to like another murder house, <laughs> you know, which. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Or maybe they were looking for one in the first place. But that does bring me... I forgot about this. One thing... And I need to do some research. One thing I found hard to swallow mm-hmm. in the movie is that in Hollywood, California, cell phones don't work in the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah. I don't know. I had a real hard time. I was like, well, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I didn't like, like that Like in 2016. Either. It is... It, there is a simple explanation, which they don't explain it at all, but there are cell phone blockers. Yeah. And you could easily... Mm. If, you're, if you're planning this party to kill everyone... You wouldn't want cell phones, you would, obviously. Well, and they so obviously that would be a cheap piece of technology that you could invest mm-hmm. into alleviating. Well, and that. they obviously put bars in the windows. They did an interior lock. They got rid of a door. They boarded up and walled up a door. So there's a lot of preparation that went into it. That's you know something. I don't. I guess that would have been hard to put into the momentum of the film. Yeah. Because once you know what's going on, it's really hard to be like, oh, and there's the cell phone <laughs> yeah, jammer. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't know how what's, you. Yeah. What's you What's bring more that up. surprising is the guests don't be like, what? There's no cell phone up here. Cell phone service. And not not that they say that there's no cell phone service. That the guests aren't like surprised by that. That's what's what's more. Well, and also although although because remember he talks about the husband Logan. Talks about yeah, it's always spotty up here, like it was when oh. they lived there too. Which, which I don't know. Which we're locals, Cody. I mean, let's call it. That's right. <laughs> My phone we're worked everywhere we went. So <laughs> the whole thing is a giant Sprint commercial. <laughs> they used Verizon, and that's what happened. It's yeah, that's what yeah. happens. You use Verizon, you got to turn to Sprint. So that's I think funny. that you can because they. I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking because she also says when she's going to call uh, the the one uh, lady's going to call her boyfriend that hasn't arrived yet. And she says, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. We got busy and we haven't uh, got the phone line fixed, the main line fixed yet. Again, I don't know many people that have just no- landlines Land anymore. My parents, but again well i heard a guy who wrote who who writes horror films he was doing an interview i don't remember who it was i wish i did but he talked about how a lot of horror films now are set in the past because cell phones are a really big problem for horror oh, films yeah. mm-hmm. cuz they provide such an easy out you know it's like we'll pick up your phone and call the police you know it's super easy and so other people try to find ways around that um hush did a great job of doing some very clever cell phone workarounds but I, it's tough with wireless and cell phones and whatever else, and that's why you see a lot of like the the Ouija movie and other ones like they take place in the '60s because you don't want your characters to be able to call for help in two seconds. Now this film, obviously, I guess it needed to be modern, especially with their budget, and that was maybe something they had to just put in there because it needed to be. Because the movie does get ruined if cell phones. But he work. also says that you it's know, spotty. He does say that, like, it comes in yeah. and out every once yeah. in a while. So. And he calls the, they call the cops. Someone's calling the cops. It doesn't when work. There's, it uh... doesn't work. No, oh, it doesn't? No, it doesn't okay. work. Um, the... I thought he, I thought he said, yeah, I'm on it, and I thought he was talking to them. And then you can hear the sirens in the background, but that was probably just from other parts so or whatever. So there was thousands of people calling the cops at a certain point, yeah. or, you know, the ones that who knows it did remind me in the end of the all that back and forth of the green room that whole like we've got to use everyday objects to try and survive but i liked this movie just a little bit better because i thought it was um a little more clever in its writing and it was more actually about something so i love both those movies um the kind of home invasion we've got to use you know fluorescent tubes and hammers to get our way out of this but this one was the superior one if you're comparing Another thing that I just thought of, um, when he's he's outside sometime and he looks up and you see a helicopter, like go across, so mm-hmm. that makes you wonder, mm-hmm. like, how yeah. many people are like dead right now, you know? So, that's interesting. Yeah. I think, 
Anything else before we give this invitation a close? I'm good. All right. Well, this has been the Valhalla Filmcast. I am Bryce Thompson. I am Brian Hammond. And I'm Cody Rari. The following viewers' opinions and commentary are the sole property of the Valhalla Filmcast. Any unauthorized reproduction without prior consent is prohibited. Any incidental music, audio clips, or film trailers are used for the sole purpose of film criticism and commentary as allowed under the Fair Use Act.